Remember, a Hallmark card when you care enough to send the very best. From Hollywood, the makers of Hallmark greeting cards bring you Joan Fontaine in Lawrence Houseman's Victoria Regina on the Hallmark Playhouse. Each week, Hallmark will bring you Hollywood's greatest stars in outstanding stories chosen by one of the world's best-known authors, a distinguished novelist, Mr. James Houghton. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is James Hilton. Tonight on our Hallmark Playhouse, we present a dramatization of one of the memorable plays of our time, Lawrence Houseman's Victoria Regina. Lawrence Houseman's genius, always notable for its delicacy and wit, was never shown to better advantage than in this delightful play, nor perhaps has any queen of history been portrayed with more humane understanding. You know, it's hard to realize that though many of us were born during the reign of Queen Victoria, she herself was born in the times of President Monroe and Daniel Webster, before a single railroad was built in this country, and when we had 21 states instead of 48. A great queen, and I think you must admit, despite all its faults, a great age. To span such a long lifetime, no easy task for any actress, we're privileged to have with us tonight Miss Joan Fontaine in the part of Queen Victoria. And now a word about Hallmark cards from Frank Goss before we begin the first act of Victoria Regina. There are Hallmark cards for every memorable occasion on your calendar. For birthdays, anniversaries, holidays. Yes, for every occasion that calls for remembrance, for a friendly greeting, a word of good cheer, an expression of sympathy. There is a Hallmark card that says just what you want to say, the way you want to say it. And that identifying Hallmark on the back. Well, that says you cared enough to send the very best. Now, Hallmark Playhouse presenting Victoria Regina, starring Joan Fontaine. In the year 1837, when Victoria was scarcely more than a child, she became Queen of England. A new world of power and politics opened before her and the era that was to bear her name. In those young days, she enjoyed herself thoroughly, meeting all things, small and large, with enthusiasm and excitement. Uh, Your Majesty, the other day you said with a courage which I thought remarkable in one so young, someday we must marry. And so I have here with me a list of possibilities for your consideration. Oh, Lord Melbourne, how interesting. How many? Uh, well, at present, ma'am, only five, but I'm making inquiries about more. The conditions, ma'am, for a suitable consort to your Majesty's throne are necessarily special and particular. He must, of course, be of royal blood. On the other hand, he must not be the direct or likely heir of any foreign king or reigning prince. I understand. He must be sufficiently young to be a suitable life partner to your majesty. He must be capable of adapting himself to English customs, habits, and uh, prejudices. He must have a certain amount of brain, but not too much. He must not expect to interfere in politics. Indeed, no. I should never allow it. Uh, finally, he must have health and a sound constitution. All so complicated, isn't it? And how on earth do I go about choosing? You ask each young man to your court in turn and see how he impresses you. Well, then, I should like to see some portraits of your choices, Lord Melbourne. I'm certainly not going to send for anyone if I don't like the looks of him. Now, here... Here's a portrait that was sent to Mama the other day of my cousin, Prince Alfred. He's very handsome, isn't he? Uh, he appears to be, but an honest portrait is a very rare thing. Remember, the future welfare of this country is now in this little hand. Indeed, Lord Melbourne, I shall pay great attention to everything you say, and I shall continue to take your advice whenever I find it possible. Good day. Good day, Your Majesty. Such a handsome portrait. Albert. Oh, Albert. Albert, will you marry me? Uh, 
And so it was that in October of 1839, Prince Albert and his brother, Prince Ernest of saxe coburg gotha were summoned to Windsor Castle. Victoria was equally charming to them both. Even the most discerning were unable to tell which, if either, she favored. It was almost the last day of their visit before she saw one of them alone. Won't you sit down, Albert? Yes, cousin. Why don't you sit nearer? Talking, then, would be so much easier. You are very kind, cousin, ever since we came to both of us, I mean. Well, I'm very fond of Ernest, and... Yeah, so am I. You've always been together, haven't you? We've never been apart, yet. How very nice that has been for both of you. My life has been so different from yours. I've never had anyone with me all the time of my own age. Albert, I have something to say to you. Yes, what is it, cousin? In my position, it is I who have to say it, unfortunately. Ordinarily, it is not what a woman would wish to say herself. She would rather... He said it. Is there anything you wish me to say that I can say? To hear you say you can love me is all I can hope yet. If you could say that you already do love me, that would be almost like heaven. I do love you, cousin. Enough to marry me? More than enough to marry you. For people in our position often marry without any love at all. I couldn't do that, Albert. Nor could I. Victoria. Then you will marry me? Victoria, my father hoped you would choose Ernest. We would be going against his wishes. Ernest? How silly of him. Why? Well, how could I possibly choose Ernest after I'd seen you? <laughs> Albert, aren't you going to kiss me? If I may. Oh, Albert, I love you. I love you. Victoria and Albert were married on February 10th of the year 1840. For those who were fortunate enough to attend the ceremony, it was an occasion to be remembered for the rest of their lives. All of England celebrated for days. Albert, just listen to the people. They're still celebrating our wedding. Oh, just think. We've been married over 24 hours. 24 hours, Albert. I hope you can say that with as much enthusiasm when we've been married... 24 years. Oh, I will. Uh, where are you going, Albert? I'm going to shave. What? To, to what? To shave. What is that? <laughs> Don't you know? No. May I watch you? Of course. If it will interest you, I can. Oh, it will. Of course it will. There. You see... Those are my shaving implements. Brushes, razor. Now, first I lather my face. Do you really? This is very interesting. Do you think one does not have to shave at all? Well, I never thought about it till now. You see, Albert, I have never seen a man shave himself before. No, I suppose not. How often do you have to do it? Once a week? Oh, every day. Every day? But that's absurd. Well, it can't grow as fast as all that. Oh, yes, it does. How strange it looks. Is it dangerous? Uh, not if you don't talk to me. Oh. Uh, not just while I am stroking myself. Stroking yourself? Oh, Albert, you are funny. Is stroking the wrong word? Well, really, I don't know, Albert. It's a part of the English language which, from not having to know, I've not been taught. Oh, Vicky, it is nice to hear you say that. Then you too do not know the English language uh, quite like a native. <laughs> for that, if it were not for the soup, I would kiss you. The soup? This, I mean. Oh, not, not soup, Albert, darling. Soap. Oh, soap, then. But I don't mind the soap. Albert, your soap, if you would like to. Very well, then. Now I will. <laughs> now you've got soap all over your nose. <laughs> Let me see the knife. Oh, how, how sharp it is. Uh, do you ever cut your soap? No, not anymore. Albert, suppose you had died before we were married. Could I have married anyone else? Of course, dearest. You had to marry someone. You could not disappoint your people. 
Shall I be able to make you happy, you think? You are happy? Oh, happy. So happy I can't... Well, I, I can't tell you, Albert. And to think that this will go on and on for years and years. It, it's like heaven. No, Vicky. Not just like this. That is not possible. That is not human nature. But I shall never love you less than I do now, Albert. No, oh, dearest, perhaps not. But you will be less excited about it, less romantic, perhaps. I shall have become less strange to you. You have come to see me shave today for the first time. That pleases, that excites you. But you will not come, I think, to see me shave every day for the next 20 years. That is only reasonable. But I don't want to be reasonable with you, Albert. To me, you're everything. Life, happiness, peace and comfort. And when I am with you, I shall want to forget everything except our love. Five kids. But still, you will not want to see me shave every day. <laughs> now you're laughing at me. Well, just a little, dearest, because you and I are both today so young. And so happy. Oh, look how the sun is shining. Uh, do not stand so near to that window, Vicky. Why not? The people might see you. But why shouldn't they? It would please them. Oh, Albert, darling, we've got to appear in public again almost at once. It's no use being shy, and why should we, when, when I'm so proud of having got you? Now, see here, I want my breakfast, Vicky. Please, go and get yourself ready quick. I'm going to ring now for my dresser to come. Order me to go, Albert. Order me. Go, woman. She says to you, go. <laughs> yes, my husband, yes. Albert, I hope I can make you happy. Are you happy, Albert? Happier than... I can never tell you. Oh, Albert, how wonderful life can be. How wonderful. moment, we'll return to the second act of Victoria Regina, starring Joan Fontaine. They say that to acknowledge a debt is a sign of greatness, and surely there can be no doubt about the greatness of Thomas Edison. This electrical genius acknowledged his debt in these words. My mother was the making of me. She was so true, so sure of me, and I felt that I had someone to live for, someone I must not disappoint. Surely any mother must treasure words like these for the heartfelt feeling they convey. And it is such feeling, deep, sincere, loving, that is carried by words on every Hallmark card. Mother's Day, Sunday, May 14th, is just a bit more than a week away, so don't forget. Stop in this weekend at the friendly store where you buy your Hallmark cards. You'll find a wide variety of Mother's Day greetings, all appropriate and appealing for this very special day. It's often difficult to express what's in your heart and mind, but you'll find a Hallmark card to help you say what you want to say just the way you want to say it. They transform your very thoughts into words that say you care. And that one and only hallmark on the back also says you care. It says you cared enough to send the very best. Now here is James Hilton with the second act of Victoria Regina, starring Joan Fontaine. <laughs> went by for Victoria and Albert, two years of English history and two years of the personal story of their marriage. Like the other young people in their kingdom, they had their moments of happiness and they had their quarrels. Albert, where have you been? Why did you not come home last night? I did not come home last night, Victoria, because of the way in which you sent for me. I told you before you went that I wished you to be back by half past ten at the latest. Yes, and at half past ten I received from you this note. Albert, it is quite time you are back. Please to come at once. But you did not come. I did not come because I was not then ready to come. Albert, when you go anywhere without me, as you had to do on this occasion, I do not expect you to be late. No. But when I do go without you, you must leave it for me to decide myself when I shall return. But this time I had already told you my wishes, and I had decided for you. 
And I sent again. Yes, at 11 o'clock I received this. Albert, I order you to return at once VR. And still you did not? I did not. So you disobeyed your queen? Yes, my dear. I disobeyed my queen. Send me to the tower for it. Cut off my head. I do not regard this as a subject for amusement and jest, Albert. No? Then it is lucky that I do. For if neither of us thought it amusing, we might have quite a serious quarrel about it. Albert, I will not be treated like this. Please to remember that, though I am your wife, I am also your queen. Sit down, my dear. Sit down. Now, let us talk it over reasonably and comfortably, just you and me, if that can, with the queen left out. When you married me, you made a promise that was strange for a queen to make, but you made it to love, honor, and obey. And because it was so strange, so unlikely, I have never once told you to obey me, except for fun, when you wished it. And now, my dear, as I have not expected you to obey me in anything, so there are some things in which you must not expect me to obey you. When you do things for me in public, officially, then I do expect you to obey me. And I do things for you in public, my dear. I obey you by doing them. But you must trust me to do them in my own way and not interfere with me while I am doing them, as you did last night. That is why I did not come to you. I'm sorry, Albert. I owe you an apology. You're quite correct. I had no right to order you as I did. Now, Vatkin, you have not kissed me good morning yet. Please. Oh, Albert. Yeah, come in. I'm sorry to interrupt, but the Chief Inspector of Police urgently begs that Her Majesty shall not drive out today. Oh, is it time already? Of course we shall drive. If the man is going to try and shoot me again today, then he might as well do it and get it over with. The Inspector of the Police feels that you should not take the risk, Your Majesty. That bullet only missed Your Majesty by inches the last time. Send for the carriage, Anson. Yes, Your Majesty. Come, Albert. We mustn't be late today. I am proud of you. You make a very good queen, my dear. With you to help me. Well, I wonder if it's going to rain. I think not. Just now it looked quite promising. <laughs> Where were the servants dancing, Albert? In the great hall. And they were in fancy dress, you say? Did you say they were in fancy dress, Albert? Yes, they were in fancy dress. Two of them were dressed up to look like you and me. They've got the fellow, Your Majesty. Thank you, Charles. I hope Charles is not the coachman the next time something like this happens. He's getting too old for this kind of excitement. The next time? Why, yes, Albert. There may be a next time. Why not? Oh, my dear, my dear. And you can say that now, as if you did not mind if it should happen again? Is that really true? Yes, Albert, it is true. For with you, I felt so safe. Didn't you feel safe? No, but I was afraid. Afraid? I was afraid that if he missed one of us, it might be me that he missed. Oh, Albert, had I thought for a moment that it might have been you, I, I could not have come out today. But it never occurred to me. What a very good thing it was then, my dear, that you did not think. Oh, no, no, no. Do not talk of another time. I could not bear it another time. My dear, I cannot tell you how much I both love and admire you. The lifetime that Victoria and Albert lived together was a long and happy one for them both. Nine children came to bless their union before that day in November of 1861, when Albert stumbled into Buckingham Palace, tired and ill after a long journey. Victoria was waiting for him, tense and anxious. Oh, Albert, you're so cold, my dearest. 
Your hands are like ice. Why did you go out in such weather when I begged you not to? I had to, my dear. Take me to bed. Take me to bed. Ich bin so schwach. Ich bin so schwach. How is he, Doctor? Your, your Majesty, he's... Uh, well, uh, we're doing all we can, and after all, his health has been good. Uh, I want the truth. Uh, he's failing. Is there someone else we could send for, some specialist we've overlooked, perhaps, some new medicine? I'm afraid not, Your Majesty. I see. Thank you, Doctor. I'll go in and sit beside him. Fragkin? Well, you're looking better, my darling. Your face has more color. You know, I've been thinking all day of the morning you came in to watch me shave. What a long time ago that seems. Does it seem a long time to you? To me, it seems scarcely a moment or two past. But perhaps beginnings do seem closer as you near the ending. Albert, you must fight with all your strength. Do you hear me? You must fight harder, Albert. Fight, fight. Can... Haven't you learned, after all these years of being queen, that it does no good to fight patterns? One must conform to them. And the less fuss about it, the better. Oh, I'm tired. So tired. Don't sleep, my dearest. Close your eyes. Don't sleep. Oh, there are tears in your eyes. Do not weep for the past. The past has been beautiful. Has it not? Oh, help us. I love you so. I love you so. Then, be strong, Victoria. Do not let love make you weak. Even for a moment, you have shown England how her queen could face danger. Now, you must show them how the queen of England can face sorrow. Do it well, Victoria. Do it well. Always. I've had you beside me for help. You... You don't need help now. You're on the threshold of the greatest years of your rule. Yes, Albert. Um, I can take my hand. Yes, darling, of course. Sit there close beside me where I can watch you. And... Shall I sleep? I'll sit here while you sleep, Albert. Until I sleep, I can only until I sleep. Your Majesty. You better go in, Doctor. He is asleep. Thirty-six years later, thirty-six years after Albert's death, sixty years after she had become a queen, England celebrated Victoria's Diamond Jubilee. In that great year, 1897, the Queen rode through the streets in her carriage and saw on all sides through her tears the proud smiles of her people as they gazed at her. And she went back to Buckingham Palace with the cheers of England ringing in her ears. She smiled rather shakily at the children and grandchildren gathered about her. Just listen to them. They sounded just the same the day that Albert and I, I remember commenting on it to him. We have been so near together today, they and I, all my people. 
Do you know, as we were coming back, you were in front, Bertie, so perhaps you didn't see. It was just by Hyde Park Corner. There was a great crowd there and a lot of rough men broke right through the lines of the police and troops guarding the way. And they ran alongside the carriage, shouting and cheering me. And I heard them say, Go it, old girl. You've done it well. You've done it well. Of course, very unsuitable, the words. But so gratifying. And, oh, I hope it's true. I hope it's true. Listen. Listen, they're still cheering, Albert. Oh, if only you could have been here. You've done it well, they said. Sixty years is little enough to give if one can hear those words at the end of them. I thank God for those words and for this moment. I thank God. You've done it well, old girl. You've done it well. <laughs> in a moment. Remember the day you broke your favorite doll and your mother mended it so magically when you fell from the tree and she picked you up so tenderly? Or the sight of her lifting a golden pie from the oven with a little pie crust and cinnamon patties made just for you? Or later still when your heart broke over your first love, remember how she put it back together again with the wisdom only mothers know? Whatever your memories of your mother, whether she's near or far away, you do want to remember her this Mother's Day. What shall you say to her? Anything or everything that's in your heart. And you'll find it said perfectly in a Hallmark card. You might choose a beautiful card rich with bright carnations and words of appreciation and affection. Or a card abloom with shy violets and words of deepest love. Whatever your taste, whatever is in your heart, you're sure to find a Hallmark card that's just right. And there are cards to mother and father to let dad share the day. Cards for grandmother and mother-to-be. Cards for every mother on Mother's Day. Mother's Day is a week from Sunday, May 14th. So before then, visit the friendly store where you buy your Hallmark cards for your Mother's Day remembrances. Be sure to look for the Hallmark that carries an added meaning. It says you cared enough to send the very best. Here again is James Hilton. Joan Fontaine, that was a royal performance. Thank you, Mr. Hilton. It was a wonderful role because Victoria was really a queen in every way. Yes, but strong-willed as she was, and so charmingly, she yet respected Albert's natural ability to perceive what was in the hearts of the people. I think those who make Hallmark cards have that perception too, Mr. Hilton, for the words on Hallmark cards seem to come from the heart. And now, Mr. Hilton, what have you selected for next week? Next Thursday evening, Hallmark Playhouse will present the story of a famous mother of literature, the mother of Louisa May Alcott, as told in a book by Sanford Salyer called Marmee, the Mother of Little Women. And for our star, we are proud to present Teresa Wright. So I hope you'll be listening. Our Hallmark Playhouse is every Thursday. Our director-producer is Bill Gay. Our music was composed and conducted by Lynn Murray. Our script tonight was adapted by Jean Holloway, and the part of Prince Albert was played by Ted Osborne. Until next Thursday, then, this is James Hilton saying good night. Look for Hallmark cards that are sold only in stores that have been carefully selected to give you expert and friendly service. Remember, Hallmark cards when you care enough to send the very best. Joan Fontaine's forthcoming release for Paramount is the George Stevens production, Mr. and Miss Anonymous. This is Frank Goss saying good night to you all until next week at the same time when James Hilton returns to present Sanford Salyer's Marmee, the Mother of Little Women, starring Teresa Wright. And the week following, Lloyd Nolan in Dan Wickenden's The Wayfarers. And be sure to listen in on June 1st when Hallmark Playhouse presents the dynamic story of Kansas City, broadcast directly from Kansas City. Hear the highlights of 100 fabulous years in a full hour of exciting drama on the Hallmark Playhouse. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. This is KNBC, Kansas City, Missouri.